the Coalition, and Splash Damage have worked to take the action packed and burly soldiers, weapons, enemies, and lore of the Gears franchise and pulls players back to a strategic point of view of the action. Does the Gears of War franchise lend itself well to the turn based strategy genre? Blitzville. Or should it stick to its third-person shooter origins? No contact. Find out in our review. Gears Tactics Story kicks off as a prequel to the original Gears of War 1, taking players back to Emergence Day when the Locust Hordes rose out of the grounds of Sierra to kill off the human race. As the government chooses to fire the Hammer of Dawn orbital weapons array in a desperate attempt to annihilate the Locust Hordes, spoilers, it didn't work, players take up the role of a motorcade sergeant known as Gabriel Diaz, who is conscripted by the government alongside Grizzle soldier Sid Redburn to chase down and kill a particular Locust, a geneticist known as Ukon. Plenty of time to read that later. We're in for a fun ride, you and me. Ukon is thought to have created many of the biological weapons of war the Locusts use, such as the giant spider-like corpsers and brutish missile platform armed Brumox. So the government wants him out of the picture. Useless human filth. Summon the beast. The Hammer of Dawn wiped out much of the society and scattered soldier and civilian alike to the winds. So Diaz is on his own when it comes to gathering allies for his operation. Players of Gears 5 might recognize Diaz's name. He is the father of that game's Kate Diaz, and the game does that for a reason. Other than an interesting connection, Gears Tactics Story is window dressing to get Diaz chasing down soldiers and allies to take on the Locust Army. Every main character is pretty brazen, and the villain is your typical Locust monster with an interesting wrinkle that this one creates other monsters, which is a bit of a nice addition. Rumax! Let up! We gotta surround him! Rocket's incoming! Get out of the strike zone! The main point of Gears Tactics is that it forgoes the usual intense and direct action of previous games, to instead offer you a strategic interface in battles against the Locust. Each soldier under your command has one of five classes, including Support, Heavy, Scout, Sniper, and Vanguard and they have a four branch skill tree that allows you to vary what soldiers even in the same class can do drastically as you level them up. You can even upgrade soldiers both cosmetically and statistically with gear you find in the field or earn from mission rewards to make them even more personalized. I don't run ops anymore, not after Gekka Ridge. As you operate the battlefield, each soldier has three actions that can be split between moving into different positions, attacking, and using various skills. Each class feels pretty good to use, and levels up as you create your best squad. Battle also feels great when you create a flow to which each of your support, recon, and aggressors can set up a wave of kills. The core of the Gears franchise is also still here. You'll be cutting Locust Grubs apart with chainsaws, popping melons with shotguns and sniper rounds, and blowing up droves of wrenches to meaty chunks with grenades like you would in any Gears game. The progression of Gears Tactics plays out entirely in battlefield missions to accomplish a variety of objectives, whether that's cleaning out enemies, outmaneuvering an oncoming explosion barrage sweeping the battlefield, saving fellow soldiers from locust torture pods, or multiple objectives in the same mission. Gears Tactics does a pretty good job of varying up what you're doing most of the time. The brightest points of this are the boss battles which often have a lot of cool variables to consider that really make you think about how best to run the board with your squad. Will you go right for the Brumax back tanks to kill it, or take out its armed guns to limit its attacks? The decisions you have to make on the fly to keep these fights under control is fun and impressive in its depth. Get 
down to one shot. What's not so impressive is the game's side missions. In between main chapter stories that move the main progress of the game along, there are these side missions that feature objectives, like saving soldiers you can recruit, or collecting gear that can be equipped. They lack the same punch of the main missions, and you'd think they'd serve optional purposes. But they don't. The game actually forces you to do a required number of side missions at previous points to unlock the next story mission. What's worse is that you can't take the same squaddies on two side missions in the same chapter, so you'd better make sure you have a recruit waiting for the next job. It wasn't so bad at first, but as the number of side missions increased before unlocking story missions later in the game, it became a drag in the flow of the game that probably should have been kept optional as the title Side Missions seems to convey. Side missions are also pretty much your only narrative decision in what is otherwise a fairly linear game. If you've followed the Gear series for a long time, you've probably come to expect a cutting edge and visceral experience from the game. Gears games are often some of the most over the top, bombastically violent, and gory spectacles this side of action games. But it comes down with the fact it's also absolutely gorgeous in what it does. Gears Tactics has the gore and the over the top aesthetic, but there's something off about it in various areas. For instance, the hero characters are good looking, but the other NPC or generic soldiers feel a noticeable step below in quality. Gore effects have a similar issue. Yes, you get your chainsaw on and pop melons with consecutive shots frequently, but you'll also see your soldiers bludgeon enemies with any weapon or shoot them at close range, and foes will fall apart in the same ways as they did if they'd been cut in half with a chainsaw. All right, let's move. I don't know what the locusts are made out of in Gears Tactics, but they seem to have a tendency to fall apart diagonally at the torso when killed in a variety of ways. I don't feel it was supposed to see a lot of this so close up, yet Gears Tactics insist on bringing me in for cinematic moments of the gratuitous violence it is known for, which is equal part satisfying and yet revealing at the seams. I'm almost impressed. Gears Tactics had the difficult mission of bringing the action and spectacle of Gears of War together with the in-depth strategy and squad tactics of games like XCOM. To its credit, Gears Tactics has gone the distance to prove it can be done. The game offers a solid experience of squad customization and tactical turn-based battles, and still keeps some of the most satisfying head explosions to ever come out of the action franchise. This is it! Give that Brumac all you got! That said, I can't say Gears Tactics achieves new heights either. If you're looking for a full depth of tactics, decisions, and consequences, like an XCOM game, or the full spectacle, gritty beauty, and the intensity of traditional gear shooters, you're likely better off playing those. But if you would like an acceptable marriage of the two, Gears Tactics may be well worth your time. Come on, join the party. For more video reviews and everything else gaming related, you're already in the right place here on shacknews.com.